Hello guys, let's see, we are online now. <laughs> so let's see if someone is coming. We have some people just starting. Hello guys, how are you? <laughs> so today we are here with my friend Zoe. She's a representative from WICAP. And the talk for the live today will be for social work. So the idea for you guys is just to understand about social work area in Australia and also how does a social work uh, uh, can engage in this area, okay? So as Information Planet, we are here most of, uh, uh, in most of the countries in Australia, so we have almost 50 offices in Australia and also it's more than 15 countries. And just in Australia, we have two information plants in Sydney, one in Adelaide, Perth, Brisbane, Gold Coast, and Melbourne. So the idea, guys, is just to show you that information plants can support you in whatever course or whatever visa do you want for study in Australia. So basically, we are a student agent who does a student visa for international students. So welcome to your, our live. And today I'm here with Zoe. Thank you for coming, Zoe. <laughs> Hi everyone. Um, it's my first time doing it live, so I'm a little bit nervous. My, my hands are wet. Uh, my name is Zoe Ling. I'm actually a representative of the Australian College of Applied Psychology, as you can see the logo behind me. Um, so ACAP has been in the industry for about 38 years. We are specializing in mental health programs such as psychology, social work, uh, community service, um, criminology, and um, counseling. So um, if you guys wanted to know a little bit more about the course individually, um, please feel free to visit our website. But today, we will be focusing on social work, <laughs> which most of the students now are really um, you know, into, and also especially during COVID, we do need a lot of social work and supporting the community. So do feel free to raise the questions as we go. Uh, we hopefully we can answer some of the questions, and we're going to do some Q and A as well throughout the whole um, whole session. And uh, hopefully we're going to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Just for you to understand, guys, we're going to have 30 minutes with Zoe explain everything about social work area here. And after 30 minutes, we're going to have Juliana from Seven Migration. She's a migration lawyer, and she will help us to understand the pathway to migrate to Australia in using the social work area. Okay? So I hope you enjoy, and let's start. We have many, many questions from you guys. Uh, we are working with many students that they are asking for social work in Australia. And basically, the first question, Zoe, that I want to. to to, to ask for you is, if I'm a student mm -hmm. and I came to Australia, I studied six months of English, one year of English, mm -hmm. and I want to maybe migrate to Australia, okay? okay. So if I want to be a social worker, mm -hmm. what is a social worker in Australia? What do they do? Yeah, so, what um, do they do? Okay, so most of the social worker, what they do is they help individuals or communities, it's a group work. So you're going out of community, community helping the individuals or group people that is a, currently not in the best condition uh, or they need help they need to uh, they need social worker to guide them through and then to get out of the um, miserable life or um, helping them to get back to the life on track so that's what pretty much the social worker do and especially during COVID um, we do need a lot of social worker than before because a lot of people they're going through a lot of hard time um, so you could be working in a nursing home, government bodies, um, you know, and any other different um, community or NGOs, um, so to help the people. Yeah. That, that, that's so nice. And usually, the student they have to to have a profile to follow this career, okay. right? So, in in your opinion, what is the best profile if a student is starting to think about this area? Mm -hmm. So, what they, they they have to like or things like that. So, as an international student, I have to say the requirement for for uh, there's a two different type of qualification which we can offer to help you to get into the social work industry or a social work um, um, environment is that you need uh, you can complete a four years of bachelor qualification in Australia with the ACAP. The entry requirement is quite straightforward. 
as long as you have um, Australian Year 12 equivalent and you're above 18 years old, you'll be eligible for um, Bachelor of Social Work. Of course, there's an English condition where if you completed six months in Australia or you have completed IELTS, 6.0 equivalent, then you'll be eligible for the Bachelor of Social Work for four years. But then another pathway will be, uh, another option will be the Master of Social Work qualifying, which give you two years also qualifying you to being a social worker in Australia, but then it does require you to have a little bit of the academic concrete background. So if you are coming from law backgrounds, um, nursing background, social work background, community service, anything to do with the human science, then you will be we will be looking at your qualification that you completed back home or previously um, and then to identify you to be um, to see if you are eligible for the master. So the master is two years. Both of the degree come with the work placement. So work placement meaning that we will preparing you to be ready to get into the industry uh, where you know especially some some of the international students they have no experience. So ACAP will be offering this work placement within your degree. So we'll make sure that you complete 1,000 hours before you graduate it. Okay, so basically social work in Australia, you can do a Bachelor of Social Work or a Master of Social Work, right? right. So there is no vocational course in social work area, right? There is, I'm sure there is, it's just that currently is not offering it at ACAP. Just remember, if you want to practice as a social worker in Australia, you need to make sure that this degree is accredited by Australian Associate of Social Worker. So they are the one that giving you a uh, registration or, or, or a membership to be able to practice. Um, the diploma of vocational programs may give you that basic knowledge, but they may not be able to give you that registration that you are looking for. Um, so yeah, it, it's good to start it as a vocational, um, but if you if you want to be able to register as social worker, then this diploma program may not be able to give it that to you. Very yeah. good. And about the, the, the structure of the course, you said that bachelor usually is four years, right? Usually it's three, but social work is four. So, social yeah. work is four. And I mean for social work. Okay. And also a master's degree is two, two years, years, right? Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit of the difference between them? Like the expectation for the student when they are thinking to, okay, should I go to a bachelor or should I go to a master's degree? Right, very good question. So for students, like a lot of you already having a degree back home, um, ideally, I wouldn't recommend you to study another bachelor degree. So then master degree will be, you know, in the next step for you to get into because you already have that academ academic knowledge within you know uh, within the higher education so if you do have already got a bachelor degree from home we would love to assess the documents from your home country home degree but then let's say you are um, high school graduates or you have never completed a bachelor degree before then it would be ideal to start up with a bachelor there is not much a difference it's just depending on the aqf level aqf which is standing for australian qualification framework so um the bachelor is aqf level seven and then the master is eight or nine so it's just the qualification wise master obviously is higher um, in terms of the qualification but then the outcome is the both of them they qualify you to be a um, social worker after that yeah. nice and about the requirements, I know that the bachelor there are some requirements mm -hmm. and a master's degree there are other other requirements, so That's it's right. more specific requirements, right? For the company background, so like yeah. I mentioned before, the master qualification, it does require you to have a minimum of one year equivalent academic study in sociology, so that sociology covers a very broad area, so it covers nursing, aligned health, mental health, community service and laws. So um, it all depends on what what subjects you have completed. So if you are not sure if you are eligible or not, you are more than welcome to send it to IP and then IP will send it back to us and it will do a very quick assessment within a couple of hours, you know, just with your academic transcript. So if you are not eligible, we will recommend you something at least to pathway into 
um, social work that you wanted to study, if that is the what you wanted to study. We do offering a uh, bridging course as well. So for those students who does not have an eight, year, eight um, you know, one year equivalent um, academic in sociology, we do have a pathway programs. It's just going to take you additional time, like seven months on top of the master. So um, that we, we will definitely have that type of students, um, you know, among all of you. Um, so we'll definitely look at it and we'll give, if you're not eligible, we'll recommend something um, to make sure that, you know, to accommodate you, make sure you, you know, to, to get into the social work. <laughs> it's interesting. Possible. Usually guys, they do a, a plan. Like if you come to Information Planet, we will have a look in your documents, we will see about your academic transcripts and we can send to them. Mm. Then they will check your, your subjects, what you did back home, what you studied. And with that, they will plan, okay, you want to go to a Bachelor of Social Work, you want to go to a Master of Social Work, you have to do that or that, you are eligible, you are not eligible, mm -hmm. and we can trace the best That's study right. plan That's for right. the student. That's right. <laughs> so we will definitely give you the options as a package or individual, so to, to, tailor your, um, to tailor you. And one thing good about ACA study at ACAP is that we do have very small classrooms. So the maximum number of students that we can have within the, each classroom is 21. And all our trainers are work in this industry. So you will we'll make sure that you're getting the latest updated um, you know, information on what type, of, uh, what type of personnel or like workers, social workers that we're looking for. Currently in the industry, you'll be able to get the latest information. Um, we also have the um, study support. So for students who are studying with us, you will be getting a one-on-one um, -on -one meetings with um, educators or someone who um, you know helping you throughout your whole study. So, for example, you want to ask the questions about assignment. How do I complete assignment? There's a different type of assignments. You know, you need to complete within the degree. So we will have someone that will be able to pass on and guide you through throughout the whole study. Doesn't matter. It's two years or four years. That, yeah. That's nice. Like. Before we go in so deeply in the social work, uh, I have many students, they come to me asking, Victor, how can I know that social work is the area that I want to, to, to work in Australia or to improve myself or to study? So about the profile of the student, mm. for example, the student has to like people, has to yep. be calm, so exactly. So um, for domestic students, we often what we do is we call them, we speak to them to see if you are fitting the the social work, you know, community. Because you definitely need to be um, in a little bit more um, engaging and understanding about different pers different personnel and their perspective. You need to think about it. It has to be a good listener, and also. Um, it's ideally to have someone that will already experience in the community service. So um, often that a lot of students approach us with, um, with this type of course selection, they will be like, I already done some of um, the community service background because imagine for master of qualification, they already have some concrete subjects. So they already have experience. Yeah. For those students who have accounting or business or um, you know, different, completely different, you know, away from the human service, they will not ideally be matching it, but you can develop your interest um, into this community service, like helping others. You don't necessarily need to be, you know, you have to have that background. It's not like that. It's more about um, your, your previous study and have you got any experience. Although, for overseas um, working experience is not count towards the academic, but if you already have the academic background plus your experience, it will be definitely a bonus because we do need a community. Um, social work is a very broad um, area, so we need overseas students to bring in a different perspective from a different countries, so you can share with the domestic students. So ACAP is pretty much 90% of our student are domestic Australian students and then 10% coming from an international. So it's really good that you, we have that mix to bring a different perspective into the classes and it benefit, uh, benefiting yourself and our students in Australia. So I guess this is a really good um, you know, uh, example yeah, for, for studying social work. So if you want to, to be a social worker, 
I'm just asking that, that because we have many students from administration background, engineering background, and we know that sometimes, especially when we can't come to Australia, we change our mind. Right? Correct. Sometimes Correct. we want to do something better for someone or, exactly. or study another area. So exactly. So people know. change their, their perspective and pathways. Yeah. And, you know, while they, they while they experience in Australia. So um, it's good. Um, you will always have to deal with the human beings. So um, don't worry if you are not if you're not a right person. If you don't if you start it and you don't like it and you will know it. So, you know, so this is something that you want if you don't like it, you, you really can't really um, continue with it. So this is something that you, you would know. Uh, we do have, like, for example, uh, we have open days. So you guys are more than welcome to join our open days on the 27th and 29th of January, which is coming up um, next month. So you are more than welcome to see, you know, how our teachers are um, going to introduce about social work. And you can ask questions to them more directly um, about social work. You can hear our alumni, um, you know, their feedback and their experience within the social work. So, you know, see, that how, you, see how that goes and then you can decide whether you would like to go, you know, go forward with the social work. And even though you start it, for example, it's, it's not... To, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that you should drop out, but if this is something that not you want to do, then obviously this is not a course that, you know, <laughs> So, one more important question, yeah. like, okay, I decided to study social work, I want to study social work, so how can I expect the practical and also the theoretical classes mm. in a social work course? Mm. Can you just explain a little bit for so, us? Of course. So the work placement, it's, uh, it's, it's a compulsory, it comes with a degree. So for the Bachelor of Social Work, you will be doing two work placement. Each of the work placement is 500 hours. So for the bachelor degree, the first 500 hours you'll be doing on the second year, end of the second year. So ACAP, We'll, we have a work placement team who can help you to find a job. So they will prepare you for the interviews. So what we do is before you ending your second trimester or you know before you're doing your work placement, we'll be sending out emails to our industry um, partners and asking them, you know, how many internship can you take? And then they, you know, they will come back to the. Oh, I can take three. I can take five. Oh, oh, at this term, I can only take one. So we'll make sure all our students be able to be get work placement before your um, enrollment starts. So let's say if you can't or if you failed your work placement, then we will have to go through with you to see what do you need to improve on. For example, you um, your, we will uh, we will prepare you for the interview. But then let's say we'll, the work placement team will actually tell you and giving you feedback that what will be the best to be in the work um, interview you know as an interview for a lot of student international they haven't done any interviews before so it will be good to prepare our students before the actual interview so you still have to go through that that will be part of your real life experience as well including that um, that um, that work placement for masters, it's the same. So we, we work placement um, procedure is exactly the same. It's just that you'll be doing um, two five hundred hours in the end of first year and the end of the last year. So you will make sure that everything you, you will complete two full work placement before your um, your your degrees uh, finish your degree, and that work placement five hundred hours the whole trimester is three and a half three and a half months. Mm, One thing very important I would like to mention here, you would need to have a very clear um, police check. Oh, so you yeah. need to have a police <laughs> check before you do it. So you must have this before we do, uh, we, before we help you um, for the work placement. So, All yeah. right. So the student has to have the, the experience. And also, can you tell a little bit about the, the timetable? So how many days the student has to go to the school and also how demanding is this course for mm, the student? For students, yes. So I'll have to say all the bachelor degrees and the higher education degree does require you to be, I wouldn't say 100%, but you need to be able to uh, put in a lot of self-study time. So each subject we're recommending nine hours per week. Three hours is minimum, you know, within the face-to-face -face and uh, workshops. Um, for every week, so it's about two to three days timetable, uh, depends on how many subjects you take. 
So for bachelor degrees, it's usually three units for the um, for each intakes. So um, if you wanted to take more, then you can do that as well, so you can finish your degree faster. But if you want to take less, you need to remember you are on the international student visa, so there is full time study requirement. So unless you have a really good compelling compassionate reason we can't really reduce your study load so it's three units is, is um is recommended um it's about two to three days a week um face to face and online um and uh, workshop is three hours each and then you need to contribute at least another three to six hours in your stu self-study time so um not within the class but you know at home or in the library oh, that's okay about the, the work placement that you said before, so usually at CAP, you guys help the student with interviews and everything. And one question that the student always asks us is, if the student is already working in the, the, the work work, the work social yeah. work, yeah. 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 so it can count as a it, work placement or not? Yes, it will be, depends. So. Uh, so a lot of students, they can actually look for their own work placement. Um, it's fine too, that usually they will be paid because the work placement we're offering, we, which is part of the degree, is not paid. But we do encourage our students to go out, experience themselves, you know, and, and, and look for the work placement. But before you commence, commencing into that work placement, make sure you, um, you speak to our work placement team and make sure that what you do is aligned with what you're going to study and it will be counted towards that you know as a part of your work placement so make sure you communicate closely with your work placement team um you will know who that person is when you start a this degree so then they will say hey um sorry this is um exactly what you know it's great that you found a job that you know actually it, you know, if um, doing what you're doing um, within a degree, so um, it, it, it's counted. So otherwise, you, we don't know. You could be doing a waitress and working a bar. You know that those ones is not counted. It's customer <laughs> service. So it's not community uh, service or social work. What we looking for. So telling about the jobs. Can you tell the the students? Like, what is the jobs that they can find? Job positions, for example, a social worker. They can find a job. I don't know, in there and there and there. So social work is super broad. Um, within the work placement, the students can decide uh, what sort of area they want to get into. Or, um, For example, um, you can get into the drug addiction camp or uh, you know, helping the women who experience domestic violence or the kids, um, you know, uh, kids with the special needs or a, what else? Um, nursing home is another one. Or you can do a I mean job, you know, help helping NGOs. That's that's also another um, another pretty popular work placement that we go into place our students. Um, aged care. What else? Um, mental health organizations. Um, Disabilities. Hmm? Disabilities, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what else? Criminal justice systems. So a lot of places the students can work in. So. When you choose your work placement, you need to communicate with uh, our work placement team to see which area that you wanted to, you know, engage in. If you don't like this one, it's fine. You can do a second one, you know, within end of the year, doing something else. So we will make sure you at least experience two different type of um, industries or experience, just tailored to what you wanted to. You can do. find yourself. <laughs> or you can find yourself, of yeah. course, by all means. Even better, you know, getting paid. That's true. <laughs> okay, I love the course. I want to do that. So for next year, mm -hmm. can you tell us when we will start the next course? So an annual every year, we do have a February, May and September intake. We have three intakes every year. February, May and September. Okay. So next intake will be 8th of February. Um, so the admission is still open for February, of course. Um, yeah. So okay. for, for both of the degrees. Easy. At the moment, these degrees are available in Melbourne and Sydney. So we do have a campuses in Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane and Perth. But Perth currently is very popular. It's just that we don't have social work yet. So it's currently going through this Quarkos registration um, you know, yeah. stage. So once that's ready, of course you will know. Just one more question that I just remembered. 
the the English pathway. So the yeah. English that a student has to have to do this course. Yep. Yeah. So they, they have to have IELTS, right? Or PT, as or long PT. as a 6.5 equivalent. So let's say some of the students are currently studying English. So I would recommend the student to get IELTS or PTE, but EAP is another option, which is English for academic purpose. So we do accept students who completed English academic purpose from um, Navitas English, which is our partner. Um, then you know um, you have to complete at least 65% above um, an e EAP three, level 3. So that is the 6.5 equivalent. But then you can't have it last year, you can have it most recently like 3 months. So let's say if you have it, if you complete 3 months ago, we might need you to, com to provide an IELTS or PTE. Oh. So that, that EAP certificate cannot be you know, 3 months older. Okay, okay, so just to summarize, mm -hmm. you have to have IELTS 6.5 or you can, you can do EAP, which is an English course, and if you achieve 6.65% 6, 6, yeah, okay, above, you can, you can go to a bachelor or mm -hmm. a master. Yeah. Just remember that NAFTAS is a partner with ACAP, so you can do a placement test at NAFTAS and they will see your, your, your grades and they will create a study plan with a EAP for you as a pathway to go to the mm -hmm. bachelor or the master, which is really good. Right? Correct, so we can package them together if, you, if you're if you eligible for 10 weeks, so 10 weeks from Navitas English plus could be Bachelor of Social Work or, or Master of Social Work. One more thing is that most of the universities, for example, on other courses, business, they accept the student when the student studied two years in diploma and advanced diploma in Australia, and they, mm. they completed everything. Yep. For social work courses, do you guys accept if the student completed two years of a vocational course above certificate four? We do, we do, um, only for bachelor. So for bachelor, if you are currently doing a vocational courses, diploma above, the diploma has, one, has to be one year, and advanced diploma is another year. So in total it's two years, um, but you can't be more than two years old when you complete an advanced diploma before you enter into any degree. Um, so we do accept if you have two years diploma above qualification with the no more than two years old for Bachelor of Social Work or in fact any Bachelor degree at ACAP, but not for Master of Social Work. So Master of Social Work is AQF level 8 or 9 above. So. Vocational is only AQF5, it's just there's a big gap um, we can't really justify. So if you are completing a vocational, unfortunately, the English is not sufficient for the master qualification, but it will be sufficient for the Bachelor of Social Work at this stage. If you have any question, guys, come to Information Planet, we can explain everything to you. So there is a pathway for vocational if you do as an English, as mm. an English proof, mm. if you want to go to a bachelor, okay? Right. So Zoe, thank you so much for everything. You helped us a lot. Guys, let me see if I still have any, any question here. I, I just think. saw one, there's a nationality mix at ACAP. Or more girls mm. or guys? <laughs> Very good question. Actually, now I'm thinking of back the students I recruited, it's actually more girls. More girls in social oh my work. God. Where are the guys? The guys who are in psychology, you know, um, but yeah, we have more girls um, studying as social work at the moment. So if you're a guy who's asking this question, then there you go. Just come to talk to us, guys. <laughs> Zoe, thank you so much. No worries. Thank okay. you for having me, guys. My name is Zoe and I'm from ACAP. Yeah, if you want to, to have any anything, call us, talk to us and we can, we can help you guys. <laughs> so now it's time to talk to Juliana from Seven Migration. Okay. If you want to stay, if you want to watch later, if yep. you want to watch in another, another place, feel free, okay? Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you, Victor. Let's thank see you where for is... having me. Thanks, everyone. Let's see where is Juliana here. Mm, let's call Juliana. Seven migration. First one.
see Tiana is coming. <laughs> is it a question? We are just. Oh, let's see. We have one more question yeah. before Juliana comes. Uh, my wife graduated in law school in Brazil about seven years ago, and since then she's been working for the government police right. administration area. Is she eligible for a master's in social work? Most likely, um, we have this Eric asking, most likely your wife will be eligible, um, but I need to see your wife's transcript in English. So um, most likely in the law system, they will be. Um, they will be eligible. So send it through to IP and um, I'll definitely review it. Easy. Send to us. We can send to them. They will have a look. Mm -hmm. The only thing is that the academic transcript has to be in English. So most, most of the times you guys have to, we can help you if you want to translate. Okay. Yeah. Let's try again, Juliana. Juliana, are you there? Let's see. Seven migration. I'm just sending the request to Juliana, guys. Juliana is coming to help us with the migration pathway right. for social work. So thank you so much thank again. Thank you for having me. Okay. Um, enjoying the rest of the time, guys. <laughs> just send through more questions to, to Victor, making him super busy. Please. And, <laughs> and um, I'll see you guys soon. If you are, I'm actually based in Sydney, so you are more than welcome to come to Sydney campus. We're located near, uh, in High Park, near High Park. So give them a call, talk to me. If you need to see the campus, more than welcome. <laughs> Feel free, guys. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay. Juliana, are you there? Just waiting here. Let's see if she's here. We will be back online uh, next next trimester in February, guys. Woohoo! Where is Juliana? Alrighty. I think she's coming. So, guys, if you have any, another question, I, I saw free. there's one here. There is one. It says, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Oh, let's just say thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Thank you, Harry. Okay. All right, Merry Christmas, guys, and Happy New Year. Stay safe. <laughs> Please, Take especially care of in yourself. Australia. We are all safe for now. We're all pretty safe, yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> Thank okay. you, Zoe. No Appreciate problem. It. So, Juliana, well, let's see if she just arrived or not. I'll call her again. Guys, if you have any questions, send before Juliana comes. If I can help, I'll help you, no worries. Oh, we have some friends here, huh? <laughs> Juliana, are you there? Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you, Ju? I'm good. I'm so sorry. Just a few minutes late. <laughs> no worries. Just... We should. Yeah, they booked a consultation, you know, right before the live. I never do that, so not my fault. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry that I miss, you know, I miss uh, Zoe's, um, is that Zoe, right? Yeah, Zoe's explanation about the course. I was so interested in knowing more about this, you can, this you course. Can, you can watch, watch later. later. We will what put in IGBT, so feel free to watch later. I will, Thank I you, will. <laughs> so, <laughs> can you say a little bit about self-immigration, about you? And then we start with questions that the student already sent to us about the social work area, okay? Yeah, of course, Can you yeah. just introduce? I, I'm pretty sure that everyone knows you. <laughs> feel free. <laughs> Some Julian is talking at one of the registered immigration agents at Seven Migration. Uh, we've been in the market for eight years, almost eight years now. And yeah, we're super happy to help so many, you know, applicants and students in achieving their dreams in Australia as, you know, we achieved ours. So. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. So, Ju, I have some questions that the yeah. student, they are always asking us, and also we collected some. So, one, one of the questions is, what is the most common ways that the student can migrate to, to Australia? So, it means that which ways, type of visas, just a general explaining, explanation for the students. Yeah, so I like to say that we have two main migration programs, the sponsored visas and the skilled visas. 
So the skilled visas, as the name says, is just based on their skills. And it doesn't, you know, they don't rely on companies to, to you know, to achieve, to get the PR. Um, and the sponsor visas, of course, as the name says, you know, they need a company, they need a sponsorship in order to have, you know, um, a strategy in order to get, you know, to get a visa. Sometimes, you know, they're going to get a temporary visa. In some cases, of course, they'll be entitled to get the PR as well. So it's funny because the the clients, and I have like three three consultations today, and, in, you know, in those three consultations, in two consultations, they ask me, no, okay, you've been explaining about the skilled visas and the sponsored visas, but I want to know about my PR. So we don't have a <laughs> PR. <laughs> Yeah, so we don't have, you know, a visa called PR. We have skilled permanent visas and we have sponsored permanent visas as well. So those are the most, you know, common ways. Um, the skilled visas, all of, you know, we have the skilled independent, skilled state nominated and the skilled provisional regional. Of course, I'm just sim simplifying, you know, the, the names. Um, they all, they all, you know, the skilled independent, the skilled state nominated, they are permanent visas the skilled provisional visa will lead them, you know, to a PR later. The sponsored visas, you know, we do have one sponsorship, uh, one sponsored visa, which is the 4HU, uh, which is just a temporary visa. And in some cases that will lead them, you know, to be nominated by, by a company on a permanent visa, on a permanent, permanent uh, employer nomination visa. And yeah, we do have a, um, a permanent, let's say it's a provisional that will lead to a permanent visa which is a sponsor in regional areas as well, which is the 494. Okay, so going to the talk now. Today, the talk is social work. Yeah. So we want to, to understand more about the migration pathways for social work. So for example, if I'm a student and I finish my Bachelor of Social Work, so uh, am I eligible to migrate to Australia? Uh, what are the migration pathways that I can follow to achieve the, the, the dream, the PR. Can you explain a little bit about that for yes. social work area? Yes, it's, it's a very good pathway indeed. Uh, we discuss you know, about this pathway a lot. Uh, there is a bit of confusion between you know, community services or community workers and social workers. They're not the same. Uh, maybe, you know, might be another topic, you know, for another day. Uh, <laughs> but in regards of social workers, um, they are on national demand. So we do have the minimum and long-term skilled occupation list, and of course, social workers are listed there, uh, which is a very good thing when we think about, you know, uh, permanent visa strategy. Uh, also, I don't know if you know that, because that I think that happened a week ago that social workers, they were allocated on what we have now, which is a priority, the skilled occupation list. So mm -hmm. we had 17 occupations uh, since, you know, the pandemic strike and they allocated, they just included social workers on this list. So that's the PMSOL, the priority migration skilled occupation list, something like that. Yeah, so they are definitely in high demand. Uh, on high demand, and uh, it is a good pathway. It, it is a little bit more expensive than other pathways, but uh, ACAP, you know, has a good, I was just checking their website another day, they have like a good, you know, good deal, I would say. And it is an amazing professional, you know, profession, in my opinion. So um, when someone goes to the bachelor, and in some cases, I believe that they can go straight to the master as well, uh, because those two courses from ACAP, they are um, recognized, they are accredited by the Australian Association of Social Workers, they will certainly, you know, be able to pass on what we call to obtain uh, a positive skills assessment in the end of the course. Uh, they need, you know, a high level of English, what, what we call, you know, the proficient uh, English, um, as probably so already explained, uh, because I believe it's the same entry requirements for the course, isn't it? Yeah. They need that to, to enroll in the, in the Bachelor of Master, right? So in the end of the course, they will be able to obtain a positive skills assessment. And having the assessment done, it depends on, of course, their points on a points test, but they will be able to be, be eligible to try the skilled independent visa or the skilled state nominated or the skilled regional, depending on the circumstances, of course. Um, if it's a new career, 
uh, if it's just a new career for them, uh, if they haven't accumulated enough work experience in the field, they won't be able to be sponsored straight after the course. But the course will lead them to a graduate visa, you know, of at least two years. And during this time, they can also, you know, accumulate work experience to be sponsored. So either they can be sponsored and would be a sponsorship that will lead to a permanent visa later, or they can try their luck with one of the skilled visas available. So for the student, if they do a bachelor or a master, they will have the same pathway to my grade They will. Okay. They will. Yeah. One more question that the most students they are asking for that should I do a social work in a regional area or for example in Sydney, Brisbane or Melbourne? So what do you recommend and can you tell a little bit about the difference that the student can have with this pathway? Having an occupation on a medium and long term is skilled occupation list means that the, the location does not define you know, if the applicant will have a strategy to apply for a PR. So it's not like, for example, if you go through, you know, a community services course, then in this case, you need to be in a specific location where the occupation, you know, is on demand. Social workers, they are on a national demand. Uh, however, of course, moving to a regional area will, you know, they will benefit of moving to a regional area, um, even if it's just because they can get extra points for two years of studies in, in, in a regional area, or um, in case, in order to get a skilled visa in a regional area, you know, the requirements are that you need to study there, then if they study, they'll, you know, most likely be able to go through this pathway as well. So th there are advantages to, you know, when you think about studying in regional areas. Uh, but for social workers, you know, it's not, uh, again, it doesn't mean that if you don't study in a regional area that, it, that you won't, you know, be able to be eligible to apply for a permanent visa. Okay, so you, uh, you have... The, you have advantage, yeah, you have advantages like getting extra points and also, I was just missing, you know, these, but also because you are studying a higher education course, then you'll be able to apply for a graduate visa via the post-study work stream. Uh, and if you study in a regional area and stay in the regional area or during, the, you know, during the, the graduate visa, then that is a way of extending the graduate visa for a further one year. And so that's, of course, you know, one of the benefits of studying there. Okay, going to, to, to the 485 visa, can you just explain a little bit the difference from Sydney, Melbourne, or Brisbane, and regional area? Yeah. Just because yeah. most of the students they doesn't know the difference between what what can I get for 485 in regional area. So it's yeah. Important. So basically, the graduate visa we have two streams. So we are not talking about about the graduate work stream uh, for those studying, you know, vets and etc. So we are talking about the post study work stream. Uh, so in this stream, specific stream, if you study a bachelor or a master's coursework, uh, you can get a two years visa. If you study a master's by research, then three years and a doctor degree, then you can get four. Uh, what they, you know, what they started offering in November last year was an additional one to two years, depending where you study and also where you spend your time or where you live during the graduate visa. So if you study higher education in Australia and the first student visa of your life was after 5th of November 2011, you will be eligible to apply for a graduate visa under the post-study work stream. Um, um, it, it's not related to the medium and long-term list. It's simply because you completed, you know, uh, you complete a higher education course. Uh, yes, and they just want to, I would say, promote the SKUs and, you know, the sector in the regional area. So they're just giving an extra one to two years, depending where you study. So that's the difference. <laughs> Thank yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but that's a very, it's very good indeed. And I, I understand that they give these extra years, year or years, because the new regional sponsored visa, which was also created 
you know, also, you know, released in November 2019, uh, this visa asks for, requires three years of post-qualification experience in order, you know, for the candidate to qualify. So I think they're just thinking if they are in a regional area, if they want to have access to this visa, they need the three years. So let's just give them at least this time after the course to complete the experience and be eligible to apply. Uh, we, have, we have one question here, Ju, that maybe can clarify the students. In the point of view of migration and migration pathways, what is the difference between if I study social work which is a bachelor or a master, or if I study community services, which is a vocational course. What is the difference between four migration pathways? Community services leads them to be nominated as a community worker. It's not the same as being a social worker. So community workers, they are not on the medium and long-term skilled occupation list, which means that the pathways are not the same. Uh, it's still a good option, but in order to have a good migration strategy as a community worker, then in this case, ideally the person will, of course, check all of the state's occupation lists and study in one specific state or territory where the occupation is on demand. The, the challenge that we have with the community workers is the fact that not all of the courses are accredited by, you know, the ACWA, which is the assessing authority of this profession. And when you study, when you complete a, a, an accredited course, then the course by itself will lead this person to pass on a skills assessment. However, if you start studying a course and the course is no longer accredited, or if the course is not, was never accredited by this authority, the person will need to complete post-qualification experience. And this course will not lead this person, you know, to a graduate visa, which means that will be very hard to complete the experience afterwards. So studying community services, the course by itself would not lead this person, you know, uh, the student to a graduate visa. So, so yeah. Even the Bachelor of Community Service will be the same, so different areas. Uh, different. You got me, you know, because I'm not sure if we do have a Bachelor. Do we? In Community uh, Services? We can double check later. Yeah, I've we never double check later. I don't... The Bachelor of Community Service. Uh, can, I don't think we do. I don't think we do because... Maybe we do, but I think it, then the bachelor will be the social work or other related field uh, because the requirement is a diploma level qualification. So I'm not sure. I'll have to check. Yeah. That's yeah. why I've never had, because sometimes when the student wants to go to, to community service, they do just the, the vocational course. Yeah. yeah. So one more question. Uh, talking about the job ready program. So the job ready program is available for this course. For example, if I do a Bachelor of Social Work or a Master of Social Work, the Job Ready Program. Can you explain a little bit and yeah. how it works? The Job Ready Program is specific to trade occupations. So this is a name of the skills assessment for tradies. So all of the occupations assessed by the TRA, uh, they have, you know, to complete the Job Ready Program or they have other two types of assessment they, they can complete as well instead of the job ready program. So uh, the job ready program will not be available because the social workers, they don't need that. So basically, when we discuss a migration strategy with someone willing to study social work, it's, it's so simple, you know. It's just you know, a matter of asking them to go to the Australian Association of Social Workers website look for the accredited courses and of course try to not to go into the ones painting accreditation but get you know an accredited course they have a list divided by state or in territory and choose one of the courses which you know they call qualifying course and it's just a matter of completing the course the course will have you know will meet the requirements of the Australian Association of Social Workers, which means that the person will pass on their skills assessment. They don't need to work afterwards in order to pass. Okay. It's all about the course. So there is no post-qualification experience as a as a requirement. 
So one, one more question that the students sent to us is, what if the immigration changed the list until I finish the course? So will I be still eligible to apply for any other visa? Uh, most of the students are afraid about that because we yeah. do a study plan like for two or four years and then the immigration changes, how it can affect the student. I must say that they don't change. They don't change the medium and long term list very often. You know, as the students think, uh, and I keep saying that they do review the list very often. But it doesn't mean that they will change. We had like two big changes, but you know, they don't change all the time. Um, as the occupation was, seen, you know, recently allocated as a high priority in Australia, and I believe that it was always on high demand. It would be very hard for this occupation to be removed, in my view. I might be wrong, because I can't guess. Uh, but I don't think, you know, they will, you know, take it out from the list. That's the first thing. Uh, if the occupation is removed, uh, they're not going to remove the occupation from all of the list. They will, in this case, remove from the medium and long term list, but not from the short term. That's what I think, because they don't simply remove, you know, uh, from the <laughs> medium and long term. It's simply take it out from all of the, the lease, you know, they normally downgraded, let's say, the occupation. Uh, so if, uh, in this case, the graduate visa will be still, you know, available because the graduate visa is not related. Again, this stream that I was explaining about is not related to the lease, so the person can still apply. Um, in terms of migration, in terms of permanent visa strategy, then the person will have to probably look for a state or territory where the occupation is still on demand and try their luck there. Okay, we, ha we have one question here, Jude. What I, need, what I need for the positive skills assessment for a social worker? Can you just explain a little bit more for us? Yeah, it's super simple. Uh, if you study an accredited course with, you know, uh, by the Australian Association of Social Workers, as I said, they do have a list in their website. And if you just go in the tab, I think it's career, career, something like that in the tab, and then you just click studying social work in Australia, then you're going to find this accredited courses list. If you, if you complete one of those courses and if you have, if you meet the English uh, requirement, um, yeah, you will obtain the positive skills assessment um, upon completion. We have one more question. How many years should I take? Need to apply for a PR if I start to, to study social work next year, for example, in 2021 with a cut? It depends if you go through the bachelor or master's. The master's, they are two years courses, but what about the bachelor? I'm not sure, probably three, three or four. Four, three, years. four, four. four years. Yeah, yeah. So in this case, uh, it's about the course. So if you go through the bachelor at least four years to pass on the skills assessment or obtain a positive skills assessment and then have a chance of, you know, trying the skilled visa. Um, and uh, if it's a master, then two years. Okay. But, but, but it's just, it, it, we need to say that it's not just obtaining the positive skills assessment. Of course, we are talking about the course today, but obtaining the skills assessment is, is mandatory. So that will be the first step. So we have one last question is that, if I do a social work, do I need to have work experience after the course finish or it can be recognized during, the, during my course? If, if it's an accredited course, then the work experience is just a plus if you want to claim points, but it's not a requirement. Because what they will, they will focus on is the number of hours that you must study and also the, the placement that you have during the course and the English requirement as well. So those are the yes. main, you know, the three main um, uh, requirements. As a cop, they are recognized. So if they a are. student goes to a bachelor or a master, they don't have to have experience after the course. No. And also they, they are have work placement during the course. So yeah, we'll yeah. they are accredited courses, yes. And it's not so, training accreditation, they are accredited at this stage. Yeah. As soon as I finish the course, is it necessary to apply for 485? Yes, it is. Uh, uh, that's one of the myths that we keep discussing because, they, you know, uh, it's easy to think that everything is like automatic. So the graduate visa relies on the fact that you study something. 
So, of course, you need to complete the studies and then you need to apply for a visa to demonstrate that you meet the requirements for such a visa. The same as getting a sponsorship and three years later being nominated by the employer on a permanent visa, it's another process. So there is no automatic uh, process um, uh, to get a visa. You always need to apply for a new one. Yeah, they have different requirements, different fees, uh, different structure, but you need to apply. <laughs> So, guys, do you have any questions? So I'll open the chat for you. If you have more questions, you can you can ask Juliana. Victor, Juliana. Gonna have to, I, I can't see the, uh, for some reason, I can't see anything. So you, you need to guide me on that. No worries. I'm just double checking here. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, like basically what I can see is that most of the students related to this area, they go to social work. They do a master's if they can, or they can go to a bachelor. Is Both of them are good pathways, as we had Zoe here talking about those those courses. And now you, we have you talking about your our pathways. <laughs> yeah, it's, very, it's a very good pathway indeed. Uh, of course, again, it's not as, you know, the, the price, of course, is a little bit more expensive than all the courses. But yeah, it's a very good pathway indeed. <laughs> So, Ju, I would like to say thank you so much. I already thank you, like, the, the Zoe, Zoe helped us a lot. So, you're helping us a lot. Uh, if you have any consideration about the social work area or any case that you had to give an ex example for the student, it will be so great for us. If not, I will thank you so much. I think that they'll cut us, they'll cut us, right? Because we have like three minutes, probably. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No. So no, thank you so much. What I would say is just that, again, you know, it's a worth, uh, worth it, like inv investment, definitely, you know, and, and I believe that there will be a lot of jobs uh, in this area. So all of my clients following this path, um, so many of them still studying, but, you know, the ones that follow this path, they, they are successful. So yeah, I encourage all of you, if you are thinking about it, Go for it. But thank you so much. You, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank and guys, you. if you have any question, call us, come to Information Planets, we can help you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.